Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Stuchetz and I am part of the marketing team over here at Tech30. First off, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. Today we have Anthony Garner, uh, who will be giving a live presentation on what's new in Windshell 11.1. We also have Ron Zabilski, who is a solutions consultant over at Text 30 And just to remind everyone, if you have a question at any time during this webinar, feel free to leave it in the question or chat box, and we will do our best to answer these questions at the end of the webinar. With that being said, I'm going to be passing it over to Ron Zabilski, who will give a little background of who Tech30 is and what we offer. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for attending. Uh, as we conduct this webinar, I encourage you to engage with us. You'll be able to ask questions and leave comments in the sidebar on the GoToWebinar panel. Even if you have questions or comments that don't relate to spe today's specific uh, topic, feel free to ask them and we can address them in a follow-up email or future webinars. And please view Tech30 as a conduit to get feedback to the PTC Windchill product managers and development team. We'll also be happy to receive comments or questions by email anytime after this webinar. So again, as Re Rebecca said, my name is Ron Zabilski. I'm a solutions consultant with Tech30. And Tech30 first is a value-added reseller of PTC software products. Second, Tech30 is an engineering company that helps engineering companies do engineering. We do this with the tools from PTC and other OEMs to help our customers make the most of those tools through training and engineering services. We strive to get to know you and your business. We are at our best when we can expand the customer's business and build a community by connecting customers who may benefit from networking with each other. So Tech30 was established back in 2002. We currently have over 80 employees with more than 50 engineers. Our headquarters are in Mission Vejo, California, but we are distributed around the US to meet the needs of our customers. I'm located in the Boston, Massachusetts area, and Tech30 has small business status as well as four business units. The first, of course, is PTC software. The second is 3D printing and additive manufacturing. Third is engineering services. And fourth, we also have a uh, Siemens software arm. We can provide a wide range of engineering services, including mechanical and electrical design, static, dynamic, and kinematic analysis, design for manufacturing, assembly, and 3D additive manufacturing. We can conduct new PLM implementation, system integrations and migrations, as well as training services for all the above. Here are, uh, are some of the, uh, uh, well, these are the products uh, uh, that we uh, support from PTC as a value-added reseller. Creo, Windchill, MathCAD, ThingWorks, and Vforia. We also have a broad portfolio of 3D printers from companies that we represent. You can have a look at these technologies on the page, and I won't go into a lot of detail here, but just keep in mind, we fo focus on industrial use cases for 3D printing, both in plastics and metals. We help our customers make additive manufacturing become part of their finished product or use it for tooling, fixtures, and jigs. If you do have interest in these areas, please contact me afterwards and we can have a conversation about your use case. So PTC's Windchill is a product lifecycle management system used for mechanical, electrical CAD data, as well as documents, text files, PDFs, and other related data. It can manage not only Creo files, but files from other CAD applications such as SolidWorks, CATIA, NX, Solid Edge, or Inventor. It's used to manage the version and revisions of all of these types of files in one application. It is a central location for your product bills and materials, and it can transform those into both manufacturing bombs as well as service bombs. It enhances project management, quality, and can manage suppliers. Windchill is a single source of truth for product data and processes. It manages repeatable processes throughout the life cycle. It maintains quality throughout the process 
and drives productivity. In this webinar, Anthony will inform you of the new functionality with this in Windchill 11.1. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Anthony. Thank you very much, Ron. Yep. Just give me one second. Okay, so like what Ron was saying, I am Anthony Garner. I am a virtual pre-sales engineer here at PTC. And what we're going to be going over is simply the what's new with Windchill 11 and also 11.1, which is our latest release for that. So for that, let's get started. So the first big thing that has been new, specifically for what's new in Windchill 11, is Nat Windchill uh, PTC Navigate, which is a suite of role-based applications that's built on the ThingWorks platform to allow more stakeholders to have access to the information they need to have. It is a scalable user interface that allows those in context of their roles to get access to the information that they need to be seeing, whether they're in procurement, whether they're in engineering, whether they're in buying, everyone will have access to the information that they need to be seeing, no more, no less. Also, along with that, we have now a PLM Cloud software as a service offering for those who are interested in maybe moving away from an on-prem offering. It's a full end-to-end -end SAS offering from PTC where we will assist you both with handling the server side on our ends using Microsoft Azure, along with a one-stop shop for any and all of your IT needs as far as running your PLM service is concerned. Okay, so what's have been improved in Windchill? One of the big ones is we have improved our searchability. So it's now a lot easier to find the right information. You can also do it much quicker. We now work with a unified search user interface. We now have the ability for complex queries for nested and ors, along with faceted search results and allowing a seamless integration with parts and classification and those traditional attributes information searches that we were using beforehand. We also have improved the process of the transformation for bill of material using NPM link. We have moved to a new HTML, HTML UI as opposed to the previous version where we were using a Java applet UI. And I'll show you a little bit later in a embedded video demonstration that the new HTML UI is much, much faster than the applet that we're currently using before. And along with that, we have streamlined our NPM link user interface. So it's much easier for people to come in, transform and compare their E-bombs and their M-bombs to each other, allowing for a faster time of manufacturing and a reduction of errors. And ultimately, that is only the tip of the iceberg. Like I was saying, this is the version of SMP 11, but we've also increased our ability for Creo Elements Direct Management updates, automatic project updates, a new process introduction process updates, along with a new system monitor or turn version of 4.0, and an expanded customer experience management quality module. So getting a little bit more granular, we're going to go into what specifically has been improved with 11.1, which is our latest release for Windshow 11. So first, we're going to start with the platform side of it. And like I was saying before, we have moved away from applets. We're following the lead of web browsers like Chrome and Firefox. Where we no longer going to be using that Java applet. And we're going to be using a WebGL plugin. And like I was saying before, it's going to allow for an easier and quicker process of working within your windshield system. And so let me just print a demonstration demo right here. So to our left is our new HTML-based editor, and we're comparing it to our previous applet based editor. So as you can see, I'm already in the process of working with my workflow editor within 11.1. And to the right, I'm still in the process of actually logging in and booting up my Java applet in order to actually get working. And if we keep our eyes to the left, I'm going to be finished what I'm doing with my work based editor before I even have a chance to actually get started within my previous applet based editor. So it's a way for quicker and more quickly, more efficiently working within your windshield system going to the WebGL plugin as opposed to the Java applet that we were using in our previous release. Okay. And Windshow has increased our license compliance ability. So we still require a license file. So subscription time limits and user licenses will be enforced for the apps in Windshow. But also with that, you do have greater capacities for acquiring those licenses. It'd be automatic through a connection to PTC. And with that, you'll have the ability for license usage reporting for Windchill's performance advisor and local reporting of those license uses. Okay. 
And we've made some increases to the overall usability of Windshield. One of the number one customer requested enhancements for Windshield is cascading attributes. Essentially, if I select a attribute at the very top level, it'll determine what the next sub attribute I do. And it allows me to down select from that as opposed to just going through nested functions. So if I take a second, we can go through a demonstration of that. So here I have my CA group. I'm going to select my continent. That's going to limit down to my countries. That's going to limit down to my states. And I can limit it all the way down to our city. So a easier, robust way to down select what options you're going for within your wind chill system. Along with that, we've also had the ability to allow for rich text within the change management processes within Windchill. So the ability to bold, italicize, underline, create numbered and bullet lists, those are all now functionalities within the change management and the text editing within Windchill itself. And the final improvement that I'm gonna go over for within Windchill is the ability for multi-CAD augmented reality publishing. So with that, you can take any of the parts that you have within Windshow and publish those as AR experiences. Essentially, you're going to take that, you're going to take that part, you're going to save it to your cloud essentially. And from that cloud, anyone with the Vforia View app, which is a free application, will have access to will have the ability to access that representation, that visualization through the thing mark that you're going to have within your windshield system. You will have a certain number of thing marks within your system, which are simply just PTC branded QR codes, and it'll be a progressive save. So as you continuously save, it'll simply overwrite your oldest um, QR codes. So that's just a illustration of the ultimate process, but I'll show you what it looks like in the flesh from here. So here we're coming to our product context for this drive system that we're looking at here. And all I'm gonna do is go deeper into that object itself go to our action and I'm gonna publish that augmented reality experience. And that augmented reality experience is based on a product view zip file. It's not the entire CAD, so it's still fundamentally lightweight. And it still maintains robust security because you can only access those if you have the proper credentials within our system. So I'm just gonna define some things, what our experience name is, what our um, surface is gonna be in relation to creating that augmented reality experience, the ultimate quality and the thing mark size, which is gonna determine relative the actual size of our object when we first um, initialize the experience. So now we can simply hit publish. And before I'm allowed to publish, I have to provide my credentials to prove I have the right to be publishing this material. So now that's been published, so I'm just gonna go up to our quick links and this is where I can see all of the thing marks that exist within our windshield system as of right now. And here we've simply brought up that thing mark, which is just a PTC branded QR code. And we're gonna go into v view, which is going to allow us to scan that thing mark and then bring up that experience, that augmented reality experience from here. As we can see, we have that uh, multi-cab part that we we're looking at before. We can zoom in, zoom out, and we can rotate it by our axis. Anything we would need to do to ultimately interrogate this object. So that is, all I have for a demonstration is what's new with Windshow 11, Windshow 11.1. Um, thank you very much for your time, and I will pass it back off. Thank you, Anthony. Um, we actually have a question for you from Bethany Runyon, and her question okay. is, um, are there major changes from applet to WebGL for visual visualization in Windshow? Um, that's a good question. As far as the simple visualizations of how they currently function within Windshield, I haven't noticed any main difference. You'll still have the same visualization capacities in 11.1 with the Web G, with the WebGL functionality. The only main difference that I've noticed is the ability to do those annotations directly within your Windshield visualization window. You no longer have the ability to do that within that visualization. You now have to bring that down into Creo View and do those annotations and save up that representation in and of itself. Okay, great, thank you. I think that answers her question. Um, and looks like there are not any more questions in our chat box, but if anyone ever has another question, you can email us at info at tech30.com. That's info te at tech-30.com. And just as a reminder, I highly encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
as we have previous CREO, MathCAD, and Windchill webinars and tutorials. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter as well to be updated on any upcoming events, webinars, and exclusive deals from PTC. Once again, thank you all for attending and have a great rest of your day.